Hello again, witches, seekers, and friends, and welcome to the Fat Feminist Witch Podcast, the show where we do a little ranting, raving, and wand waving. I'm your host, Paige, and together we are going to explore magic and spirituality, social justice, the psychic realm, and most importantly, Fiona Horn! Please forgive my yelling, witches, but I'm just very excited. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the podcast. I'm very excited to say that I have a guest today. I love having special guests on the show. Now, you might have noticed, (laughs) if you pay attention to these things, that this is episode 50. Yay! And that's because 50 is the order in which I recorded it. So I have episode 50 coming out today and episode 49 coming out next week. And I decided you're just going to have to deal. We're already having two episodes coming out on a Monday, two weeks in a row. So I figure, why not just keep it weird? It is Mercury retrograde after all. So if you were thinking, hey girl, that math doesn't check out, you were right. (laughs) So today's episode is episode 50, very excited. And it is a brand new interview with Fiona Horn, who I chatted with once before in February of 2018 about her autobiography, The Naked Witch. This time we're talking about her new book, The Art of Witch, and her recent tour through Australia, performing spoken word from the new book and playing with her awesome 90s electro rock band, Def FX. So today's episode is coming out on this very marvelous Monday afternoon or moon day afternoon, if you if you were, um, because today, July 22nd, Fiona's first ever Oracle deck is also coming out and it's being released in the UK and North America. That means you can buy it right now. So the Magic of You Oracle features really, really cool art. And we're going to talk about it in the episode um, by Marcella Bolivar and was created to help you navigate your own path of self-discovery, especially when that takes you through periods of darkness. Fiona is very much about exploring the darkness and the light that we all have inside of us. And what's really, really neat is every card has a ritual that accompanies it and, and goes with its message so that you can use it in ritual work or you can, you know, take the advice of your cards and, and work that into your magical practice. So you can find out where to buy it, exactly where you are, by going to FionaHorn.com. Uh, you can also, of course, find it on Amazon or online bookstores. And you should go request it at your local bricks and mortar witchy shops. That's how they get new decks in, right? Especially brand new decks that just came out. So just like my previous chat with Fiona, which is still one of my favorite interviews ever. This one is very, very cool. It's She's inspirational. She's funny. And she's just so magical. And she's a really captivating speaker, right? She's, she's not just a speaker. She's a speaker. She's a performer. She's a singer um, and an artist. And it's always a pleasure to have her on the show. So without further ado, which is I bring you Fiona Horn. Why exactly did you decide? To, well, I mean, you said you, you booked, you decided on this schedule. Why did you decide to do all of these things right now? Well, it, the reason I decided to do a double, I guess a double headline type tour in Australia in three and a half weeks was because it was all meant to happen back in 2017, but there was a, two catastrophic hurricanes that hit the island I live on in the Caribbean. Yeah. So when I, um, you know, and then between that happening in, you know, August, September of 2017 and then all the recovery and, and the aid work and everything that went on but the year after, and then I got a job myself flying airplanes in uh, out of the island I live on, St. Thomas, uh, in October of last year. But by then I had this a guilt complex, really, because I had promised um, my publishers the, the what I call family instead of family, but family, like the people that were, you know, hoping that the band was going to tour back in 2017 and I had my autobiography out then so I was going to go out to Australia and be out there then. Um, I just felt like I had to, I owed it to them. So I put this trip together in three and a half weeks so I could fit it in with my annual leave from my job. So it was just, it was just insane. I mean, but it was absolutely brilliant and, and it worked because I think there was just, there was so much love, as hectic as it was for me to, you know, arrived, literally I was on, I flew 36 hours and then I'm on TV, I'm on radio, I'm in the, doing the newspaper stuff, then I'm in band rehearsals, then I'm on stage and I blah, blah, blah. I never felt tired. I only felt nourished and grateful because there was, 
Australia just opened its arms. I haven't been back there for a long time in this capacity and it was just so beautiful. The, the fans of the band who were so passionate about, you know, they were bringing their kids along, you know, there was, there was so still a cool. mosh pit even 20 years later. Yeah, it was, and, and people were coming along saying, yeah, see, I'm bringing my kids to show them the cool music that their parents listened to, you know, in the 90s and, <laughs> or when you, when they were conceived, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like, you know. And so it was just really beautiful like that. It was a real sense of family and community. And then from the magical community side of things, getting to do spoken word events and just talk about the last, you know, you know, I don't know, over 20 years since I came out of the broom closet and the changes I've seen. And then to also be able to, you know, witness the evolution of the international magical community, but particularly the Australian magical community, there's a tremendous sense of, of, uh, identity and, and joy and unity and diversity out there, which I enjoyed immensely. And, you know, it's it's a humbling to to have, like, like someone come up to you and say, I was given your book, you know, when I was 14 and it changed my life. And I am a witch and ever since I read that book, I have identified with that, with the past, and I live a fulfilled and happy life. I'm bringing my children up this way. I mean, we all gift them you know, a book on their on their thirteenth birthday. I mean, there was you know, they're That's sharing incredible. their stories. And yeah, and just you know, we've gone as a community and as witches in particular, we've gone from being you know something that's you know either a Hollywood gimmick or a hocus pocus Halloween fairy tale scare story, um, or just you know a, a knee jerk reaction to Christianity. We've gone from being perceived as that to being this really mm-hmm. vibrant. Um, part of the spiritual community of the world. And, I mean, I, I felt tremendous acceptance from, like, not just within our own community but also from the mainstream too. There's an awareness out there. And, I mean, you know, a witch's role in in the grand scheme of life now is, is really important um, cause, because of the things we hold sacred, you know, and uh, we live in environmentally challenged times. And so as witches where, you know, with our relationship with nature, with our... Um, with this this sense of community now, we're stronger uh, than ever. Yeah, and it's really it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see. It's amazing, and yeah. it, and it's it, it's extremely. I, I just feel so grateful when people say, "Wow, you shone a light on my path." I'm still on the path, and I just feel so grateful to have played that small role in their lives and get to meet them and do a selfie with May Page because that's what we do now. We do selfies. Yeah. We weren't doing that 20 years ago, and then we all become <laughs> friends on Facebook. Like God. It's it's so bizarre. Like I I remember oh, when, I know. when I started going to concerts. You know, I still had to take the film to get developed after. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now it's like fans are uploading videos and people are uploading things through my talks. And it's, I mean, I love I love the tool of communication that social media is. And I, you know, when I was asked that a bit when I was out there, and I talk about it, you know, the impact of, and I even put it in the new book in Art of Witch and the manifesto that that's just come out. It's like. Um, the, the impact of the internet and social media on witchcraft because essentially, you know, I mean, really we're an occult part, secret, hidden, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, but but not really anymore. There's always going to be that knowledge. You know, I, I think where we're still, we're still part of the occult is within the individual. Ultimately, those, the mysteries, the biggest mysteries are the ones inside the individual and that becomes the most, uh, I mean, I, this is what I've experienced mm-hmm. anyway, that, you know, it's when we turn our attention inward that the, the darkest secrets are to be, you know, unlocked, revealed, revealed and learned from, yeah. And uh, But as a community, I think it's wonderful that we're really out and proud and connecting and and, and sharing and, and putting it all out there. I think it's really healthy and it's an essential part of our evolution as a, as spirit, as a spiritual, you know, community on the planet. Yeah, it's very supportive. It, it definitely has that, like, mm. that's, that spiritual nourishment that I feel like a, a lot mm. of us were missing for a long time. And you can yeah, really see yeah. the love coming through all the selfies from both the spoken word tour and from the mm-hmm. DefX tours. Like I, I've been looking at them all online and people are just, you can tell that they are so thrilled to be there. They are so <laughs> excited. And, and I, I just, I felt it. so touched by that because, you know, I live out on a little rock out in the middle of the ocean <laughs> now. I kind of banished myself out here to, you know, to come out and, and do aid work and be, get, you know, get a career as a pilot going. And now I'm a commercial pilot and it's like, I feel very isolated and, and candidly, Paige, I'm very lonely a lot of the time. And I, I realize that. I mean, I live vicariously through social media out here on the rock when we have Wi-Fi, um, you know, because that goes down periodically out here. But it's like, 
I realised I'm lonely and putting myself back in Australia for that month and just being so, I was hugged so many times, like, yeah. by people. It was just so beautiful, like, to just, you know, feel the closeness and and that nourished me on a personal level and uh, in a way that it doesn't happen out here in the islands. I mean, I, I tend to, you know, I fly people around. I guess I spend some time with them, but I drop them off. I teach people at my spin class, but they go home after class. It's like, I don't have a lot of friends out here. It's you know, this time of year, summer, there's like, you know, we're on skeleton crew on the islands, you know, because yeah. it's hurricane season. And, and you know, and I, I really awake, awoke me to the, to I, that I live with loneliness and I'm a very social person. However, as a witch, I, I intentionally and deliberately um, pull away and, and go within. And, you know, when I am alone, I don't sit around twiddling my thumbs. I'm <sighs> writing in my journal or I'm doing ritual work or I'm writing another book, or, you know, or I'm, yeah. You know, doing the paperwork for the flights the next day, whatever, but or, or doing social media stuff. But um, but I realise I'm lonely out here, so that was really it was just a real blessing to be hugged and laugh and smile and see people and and you know travelled all over the east coast of Australia and in and out of like God, what was it, four or five cities on that tour with the band and the spoken word. So I feel very blessed, you know, very very blessed to have experienced all of that. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. So how was it? performing again with the band I saw videos of you dancing and singing and you were great and I still love <laughs> your rock star fashion is still like absolutely uh, perfect <laughs> oh thank you you know I had so much fun shopping online at Dolls Kill and Killstar they're like online stores um, based out of LA but they ship that they ship the clothes out here to the islands and I tried them on and went yep that's wardrobe and it wasn't they weren't even expensive they were just cool but yeah I love my sequin pants and I had a um one of the tops has a, a, a cut out of the sun off an A weight tarot deck, you know. Oh, <laughs> I just really cool. cool. That's um, yeah, no, it was awesome. And even like a locket with witch written on it, because you know, becoming a but like being a witch is a freaking fashion statement now. You can get clothing that I've got this backpack that's got witch in giant silver letters <laughs> on the backpack, and I wore that everywhere, and no one gave me a hard time, and I just <laughs> slammed that on my back and advertised that I'm a witch, and it was. That's so no fun. one gave me a hard time. Yeah, that's <laughs> so fun. fun. I, I love, love I it. love it is seeing fun. For real everywhere. witches wearing those witchy clothes that are just so overt, it's just, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun and, and, and all that good stuff. But, yeah, I had a great time. I mean, jumping around on stage, people were like, oh, my God, you still got your voice. You know, I turned 53 in linear years and everyone's like, bloody hell, how do you do it? <laughs> and the thing was I teach spin. I teach here at the gym. Yeah. And so I just said, I, I just teach these really hardcore cy- indoor cycling, you know, spin classes, and I scream at my students, you know, and that's what warmed my voice up. And they love it out here. They think I'm fucking nuts. And I, I just make them do these crazy things, put together these heavy playlists, and you've got all the local ladies on the bikes, all the West Indies ladies on the bikes just going, yeah! And, and then it's like, you know, to ACDC or whatever I'm playing. I don't I know, you that. know, like bloody... It's just I play tool sometimes, you know. It's like craziness, but and Slipknot, but um, they love it. And then they come up to me and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I'm I've lost forty pounds. I feel fantastic." And I love I love sort of you know having a positive, transformative role out here in the islands with my yeah. my night job, my part time job, <laughs> being able to get active and like still like still be yourself, still bring in that like that badass rock well, that's, and roll. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, the end, the, the the performing on the bike kind of thing, and I, you know, my my secret, it was my secret weapon though to being ready to just land in Australia and go hard like that. I've been in training for months, teaching spin <laughs> and screaming at my students. You know, this is probably something that a lot of musicians haven't thought of yet. They should probably get on this bandwagon. Oh, it's the best thing, and then you know, and I get paid to do it too. It's like, I mean, it's a job. I mean, I get paid. I'm teaching tonight, actually, after you and I speak, as as this is being recorded. I'm teaching tonight. I was just making making my playlist just now. I've got K Slay in there, and (laughs) that's awesome. And Eminem's in Fifty Cent's new single, and you know, they've done with Ed Sheeran of all things. But I mean, it's a fun. It's crazy because I get to, um, like, in having this funny night job where I teach spin three nights a week now um, and then I fly airplanes all day, it's a great way for me to burn off steam after sitting in a cockpit all day and, and flying around. But also, too, um, I get to, it keeps me really current with what music's popular yeah. and I hear, you know, what the mainstream's listening to and then I can slip in some classics or some really kind of 
avant-garde left of centre choices and make these play- – and I get known for my playlists because they're very eclectic. And then I put on a show on the bike and that's what makes the classes popular. <laughs> that, that's so true. Every time I've taken, um, especially spin classes, the music mm. so matters to me what they're playing. And oh, it's so important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. You so know, you have important. to have great. It's like going to a nightclub. You've got to have great music to just get you get it on. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, you can't you can't really like get into that zone. It's like distracting. Yeah, the music's no it's good. distracting and and painful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to bring on the adrenaline painful. and the euphoria. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining all, all these like cute little old li- island ladies spinning to like Slipknot now. Oh, it's now. true. Yeah, but it. they're not little. They're like they're they're curvy pr- curvy women. You know, yeah. it's a lot of sexy voluptuous women out here, and and cool. it's like that's that's the vibe, man. You know, so I go from playing Stoker to Slipknot, and it's yeah, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> oh my god, it's so much fun. They just love it. They, they, and I know everyone by name too, so I call them out by name, and it's like we just we it's like a party i love it i mean i yeah. it's a really important part of my social life like i was saying it's like i don't because i don't drink alcohol so i'm not in the bars and really in the islands when you live out in the caribbean everyone's like oh my gosh that must be so exotic and glamorous well it is when you visit for a holiday <laughs> but when you live out here it's actually quite different and um i really yeah going to australia for a month and having that experience i mean australia is a very a cosmopolitan, beautiful, modern country. As far as the cities go, I mean, I, the standard of living so high. And then you just take three steps outside a city and you're into the energy of the land. And it's like, so it's cool. magic. Australia is magic. Yeah. There's a, I, I was wonder. I felt the strong pull on this trip and I was thinking, what is pulling me? And then I realized it was the land and it was the, the water and that, the, just the, the essence of Australia's natural heritage. And, was pulling me, like calling me, and I thought, well, this is where I recognised that I'm a witch, was on that land, growing up in that bush, interacting with those animals and that, that well, that flora and fauna, that particular look, smell, feel, you know, the huge, wide blue skies. I mean, that's when I knew I was a witch out there. It didn't happen when I was in a forest in England or anything, you know. It was like yeah. it was out in the land of Australia in the bush. And so I guess it's not surprising that I would feel that, that pull, that call again, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty magical, magical place. Very magical. Sometimes there's just uh, some some places. There's just something about them, and sometimes it's because they're mm. home, and sometimes it's because they have their own magic. And I think Australia is definitely one of those places. That it has, has its, its own, own magic. Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, I felt to be honest when I was, you know, when before you and I started talking today, when we were chatting it. Um, being in Boulder and, and hike, just going for a walk up the trail through the Flatirons up Centennial Trail and Red Rock Spur. I just did that two days ago when I was there to film that TV show on the weekend. And I mean, just walking amongst the wildflowers, I was like, oh my God, I could live in Boulder. If I could just do this pilgrimage every day up these winding red dirt roads up into the mountains, mm. I'd be the happiest witch in the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that, that call from nature. You, well, I think as witches, we know our hotspots. We know we're, what we're resonating with, you know, yeah. for sure. We can we can feel that. And I think just nature mm. in general has a little extra pull on those of us who identify as witches. Oh, absolutely. It's 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 One of the things I put in the new book is that, that it's, you know, and, and I think some of the points I put in Art of Witch could be controversial because I'm saying, okay, this is what I've learned and experienced tangibly in the last 30 years, you know, and, so this is the manifesto, but but it's that it is it is essential for a modern witch to have a relationship with nature yeah. and to actually physically immerse herself in the natural world, which means get get out of your office, get out of your kitchen, take your shoes off, go and walk on the earth, you know, and and do that and and do do that ritual work under a full moon and be be out there, immerse yourself in the elements and and in the natural world, because that only then can the witch truly know herself, you know, yeah, and that. You know, I really, I really believe that now that that's, you know, it's just absolutely essential that not just to have it represented symbolically on an altar inside your house, you know, yeah. you've actually got to get out there and get into it to really be like, to, to feel that intrinsic, to plug into that, that, uh, that power, yeah. you know, not, not that we need power to be more and or powerful, but just to feel, you know, a part of, of this, you know, this magical universe that we're, we, we are in, you know? Yeah. Sometimes and that you we're don't co- realize. That we're co-creating. Yeah. Sometimes you don't realize how separated 
we, mm. it's so easy for us to get separated from that, from the yeah. earth or from other people. And sometimes you forget yeah. how important that connection is. You have to is. remember other people are a part of the natural world too. You know, Absolutely. That's so true. It's, um, and yeah, so if we, if we can be like with art of which it's like, it's, it's tips to living a, a happy, fulfilled life as a witch. Cause I think that's one of the misconceptions. If you're a witch, uh, people would think, oh, you cast a spell and you work, the stuff works out. And, and I think as we all know, spell casting usually trying to micromanage anything in life tends to throw at you the very thing you think you're wanting to avoid because yeah. you've got a lesson to learn. <laughs> um, but as far as living a happy, fulfilled life as a witch, like what I offer in Art of Witch are, are you know, just, just key principles. That and, and one of those things is get your ass in nature. Like get out, get into it, get your hands dirty, open up your, your eyes to the sky and, you know, and, and consistently and deliberately uh, make that a, an active part of your life. Um, otherwise, you, you're not really practicing witchcraft. Yeah. Yeah, I you know what? I actually agree. And everybody's got different nature. I mean, you don't have to go directly into mm-hmm. the woods, I guess. <laughs> into the no, I mean, it, like an urban an urban witch would would, yeah. you know, in theory go and just go and walk in a park, you know, Absolutely. or have a you know, there's something where you're actually interacting and and immersing and, and tangibly physically engaging in elements of the natural world. It's um that's that's when we that's when on, on a, I think on a molecular level, something happens, you know, with witches. Yeah. yeah it's just, um, you feel that link, that connection, like, okay, mm. this is a part of me and I'm a part of it. And you feel that. that mm. Yeah. Uh, so the art of witch, which came out July 1st, uh, super exciting. I was reading a lot of the descriptions in interviews. And one thing I noticed that you, or that it mentioned a lot is that the book breaks a lot of rules. Um, a lot of the old rules of witchcraft. Um, what are what are some of these rules that you break, and why is it so important to kind of bust through that? Well, I think one, one thing that I that I suggest in it that's been getting a little bit of attention is, um, you know, so often in witchcraft we say, "As is my will, so mote it be." You know, and it's the Alistair Crowley um, kind of coined phrase, and and we say it all the time. And I've had it in my books. You know, every other book I've written is it's like a way of of sealing a spell or, or kind of sealing an intention as if my will, so mote it be. And I'm suggesting that, that uh, ego, it's, it's time for ego to take a lesser role in, in uh, the way we practice the craft and that ego actually, whilst it might be an essential survival tool at a point in life, uh, up to a point in life, around, and I go so far as to say, you know, your mid-third decade, it starts to become a, a tool of self-sabotage and it's, it's kind of something that needs to be dismantled after it's played its useful role. And uh, so then in that case, as is my will, so mode it be, I suggest or offer in the book that maybe that word will become part of the word willing, you know, willing to yeah. show up, be of service, be guided, be helped even, you know. It's extremely powerful to let yourself be helped sometimes. Oh, it really is. <laughs> you know? And it can be really, yeah. really hard. It can be really hard yeah. to let people help you and to learn that exactly. lesson. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's a humbling, you know, it, but, you know, it's, um, so I sort of talk about the egoless humble witch, which is, you know, not what you originally think when you're getting into it. So, <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's things like that. And then also, um, you know, just shifting the, like in, um, the first, uh, part of the uh, manifesto it's I should actually I feel like I've got to I want to get it and quote myself correctly even though I wrote it I don't want to misquote myself so I'm actually grabbing the book as we speak um but uh there's a I sort of suggest a different approach to the threefold law as well which is um you know not sort of being bound by this do unto others as you know like the as if the threefold law you know just changing the perspective on that as well because I think as a as a uh, community and also as I mean we're, we're kind of creating our paths as we go along and the, the strength of the strength of modern witchcraft lies in in all this learning that is going on all this evolution that's going on and, and the fact that it's not fixed and static that it does grow that it is you know um, something that's reflecting the input of the members so I sort of suggest you know, I suggest a moral law, which is allow others to be as you would be rather than, um, you know, 
thinking, oh, um, I won't, I, I won't do something because I don't want three times of that to come back. Just, just allowing others to be as you would be, and yeah. which means not to judge, not to point the finger. Like because when you point the finger, you've just become the victim of the three fingers pointing back at yourself. It's like, you know, it's um. So it's a. I think what I've done in the book is talk about how to be powerful by being powerless That's <laughs> and really actually important. become less and, and, and become less, not more. Yeah, that's actually really important. That's such an important lesson because power can, you can totally get out of control when it comes to power, where you start to see power in these very um, like inauthentic ways and inhuman ways. So it's important to remember that we're just this small kind of part in this whole big thing and all these other people are there too. Yeah, and there's room for everyone. There really is. Um, yeah. There's a, you know, there's another thing I I mentioned, I've mentioned in a few books, but it's uh, I kind of tap into it again in this one because it just keeps ringing true, which is, you know, I, I kind of had this, this, meditation and, and uh, a bird spoke to me, a hawk spoke to me, and I've written about it, you know, but it's in this book again of just when this hawk actually communicated with me, I realized it was the Christian father God that I had grown up with. That was that expression of divinity. And so the hawk uh, at the time, we were in this garden and, and the hawk said to me, look at all the trees in the garden. And I looked at them all and the hawk said, do you see they're all different yet they're all the same? And I saw that there were many species of trees around me. There was a, you know, there was a willow, a gum tree, an oak tree, and even a jacaranda tree. It was, it was quite a diverse garden. And the hawk said, do you understand the survival of the tree depends on its diversity? And I said, mm. I understand. And uh, the hawk said, you know, and at this point I'm realizing it sounds to me like the Christian father God that I was brought up with, as, you know, that's the only knowledge I had of the divine as mm. a little girl being brought up in a Catholic, a Catholic faith. So this this hawk, this Father Christian God speaking to me through this hawk, and as he says, you know, do you understand that the survival of the tree depends on its diversity? And I said, I do. And then the hawk said, so it is with my love. My survival depends on the diversity of my love. So every spiritual path, every religion is an instrument, and when they're played together, those instruments, it becomes a symphony of the soul, and that is my voice, the voice of God. So when the hawk said that to me, I realized that like it was the witch, witches, Christians, Buddhists, everyone, Jews, we've all got to play our instrument because if we all played the same instrument, God's voice would die. The symphony of the soul is God's voice, yeah. it's the divine voice. So it was just a really beautiful thing because, you know, that, that happened well over a decade ago and I still was working in the entertainment industry and a bit kind of knee-jerk reactive feeling I always had to go get on my soapbox and carry on and fight for a bit of a, a, for a place in the world as a witch and I just don't have to do that anymore I just know that we've just and I write it in the book which is we must play our instruments proud, be proud be relaxed proud doesn't mean be ego full of ego and and um and finite in the in your expectations it just means to be be proud of your identity and, and love it and celebrate it and love and celebrate each other and and allow our magical community to continue flourishing and prospering. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. What a beautiful message. Like, wow. It's very peaceful, eh? It's really, yeah. you know, I think as witches, we often feel we walk the forgotten, dismissed, or trivialized path. And this yeah. is God, the, the God, the, the big divine voice itself saying, hey, I need you. Please play your instrument, <laughs> you know? Because without it, I'm screwed. Yeah. I won't have a voice. So yeah. please carry on. And it was just, um, it was a beautiful thing to experience. So, so this, you know, there's kind of wisdoms and, and thoughts like that through the art of witch. It's essentially like it's, it's, it's musings of a modern witch. I guess the first part of it is a letter to the reader. And then the, the second part is the, uh, the actual manifesto, which is point by point breakdown of, um, codes and principles of, of, of behavior, ethics and behavior that, you know, I think if conduct, if you conduct yourself as a witch, along these lines, then you can have a happy, fulfilled life. Yeah. And then the third part of the book is actually like a reference thing where you can you can sort of reference through the through the actual manifesto to make some elaboration of points. So there's like kind of three parts. Very cool. That's very cool. What a great idea. I love this. <laughs> I, I'm trying to make sure I make notes here because uh, <laughs> my copy's on its way probably on Monday oh, when the Oracle comes. Well, I'll tell you it's got... <laughs> 
it's got a beautiful um, velvet cover, The Art of Witch. I mean, the publishers, Rockpool, did a beautiful job and, and created this hardcover velvet cover um, book. And I feel so grateful because I think it's I think it's my 13th book and I have intended it to be my last. However, I've learned after Australia that the universe was just slapping me over the head going, never say never, Fiona, you know. You never who, who know. Are you to, who are you to think you know what you're meant to be doing? Just shut up and go where you're led. So yeah. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> but um, so who knows what's coming up. But this is, I, you know, this is a beautiful thing to have the opportunity to, to put my thoughts down like this after all these years and, and I have it bound in this beautiful velvet hardcover. It's just oh, I feel I'm very so blessed. Excited. <laughs> I'm I'm extra <laughs> excited now. I don't think it said that when I when I purchased it that it was velvet. So I'm I'm pretty excited. Yeah. No. Everyone's like, oh, oh it's velvet. A <laughs> little bit decadent. I dig that. I dig mm. that a lot. So your spoken word uh, tour that you just did you just finish it up? Yes, yeah. just just finished it in Australia. It was, you know, um, it just weeks. was so beautifully attended, and 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 it really brought together people. I mean, one of my the favourite things that was happening is someone would arrive on their own, and then you know I do this big signing signings after it. So I'd stay another two hours, three <laughs> hours even after the events, and sign everything, do photo selfies, all that. The number of people that said oh, I arrived here alone and I'm going, I'm leaving with friends. I've made friends today. And I thought that was so beautiful because there are solitary witches that were coming to these events, you know, uh, on their own and leaving with a group, leaving, awesome. uh, you know, being, you know, to, to go and have, have tea or coffee and chat more about magic. And I, it was a real celebration and bringing together of the community. So um, I'm kind of thinking, even though I said it's the last tour, I, I thought heading out there, I, I made an announcement on social media that it was going to be my farewell Australia tour <laughs> two weeks before I went out. Because I just thought that's what what was going to happen, and I've got a full time job flying airplanes now. I live in the Caribbean; I, it's literally Australia's the other side of the world. But it was such a remarkable experience that the dur- jury, my inner jury, is out. So all I'm doing at the moment is just asking the universe, my idea of a high power, to you know shine a light where it wants me to go. And I'm just in the meantime going to take it a day at a time, and you know be grateful, work hard, and see what happens. You know, see where I end up. Yeah. where I go next because right now I don't know but right now I'm flying airplanes again in the Caribbean and chatting with you and that's about as complicated as life needs to be right now that sounds beautiful but I don't I, know anything <laughs> anything could happen in the future I think I was wondering if you were still flying because of how hectic well not hectic but how how packed your schedule was this summer so I'm happy to hear that yeah you're still well that all the time. I had to take I took the my annual leave my three and a half week annual leave to go to Australia and do that. We we get a bit more annual leave in the islands than normal because it's really it's kind of extreme living out here and the hours we work are like crazy long and you know we're not we don't have weekends or days off. We just work every day pretty much yeah. within legal re- rest requirements as required by the FAA. But but you know so we our, when it comes to summer and the hurricane period we're we're always given a chunk of time to go off get off island and. So we don't get island fever because it is really remote living out here. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, that would just that would just add to that little bit of loneliness. Yeah, it does. It's, it's definitely it's definitely requires a specific skill set to, and especially because I don't drink. You know, like a lot of people yeah. handle that stuff by just getting wasted all the time, and I don't. Don't I'm sober, so it's. It's I just, hard. I'm just. Uh, it's it's you've got to you've got to you know monitor your thoughts, manage your emotions carefully. I mean, last night it was full moon. Um, I, I met up with other girls who weren't witches, but we had an amazing breathwork experience under the full moon. And we, um, so we were doing like, uh, like meditation through breathwork. And then, um, we sat out on the balcony and, and had a, um, not really cakes and ale, but it was kind of, I thought, this, we might as well all be witches for what we're doing out here, sitting under a full yeah. moon, <laughs> talking about moon magic and celestial energy and, and eating together and, and, uh, drinking lavender tea. I mean, it was like, <sighs> It's just like a bunch of witches. <laughs> they know I'm a witch, but they're not witches. They're just modern girls interested in, in, in you know, evolving their spiritual selves, which I really yeah. love. So, yeah, that was what I did last night in the full moon. So um, I really make a point of trying to make things like that happen, but they don't happen very often. It was just really lucky yeah. that I happened to be not flying, not working, and was able to spend this time with these girls just and have a quality experience. I mm. love I love how many witches that aren't witches there are out there now. There, is, yeah. there are so witches many that aren't witches, people. I know. Yeah. All of these girls are witches. I was like, gosh, 
you know, we all pulled um, after the breath work we did, um, we, which was really, the breath work was incredible. It was like we all shared visions and when we were sh- talking about what we experienced it, through the breath work because we were doing the breath, the breathing for 40 minutes, we all saw the same stuff. It was wow. really the same, like, like I mean, really, I even after all these years, it still freaks me out how yeah. magical life can get and how connected we are when we allow ourselves to be, you know. Yeah. It's Absolutely. like the world opens up to a whole new language, you know. But um, after that, we also pulled cards from my Oracle deck from Magic of You, and that was really, really beautiful. Um, that the, the one, We pulled a group conscience card, and it ended up being Marak, which is Embrace Oneness with the Universe, and it was the number 16, which was the date. That's and beautiful. We'd been, yeah, and we'd been talking about how our visions were where we were merging into this kind of it was like water light, like blue light, but it was like water. And it was, I felt like I was moving through it very fast, like and particles shooting past me and being shafts of sunlight shooting through it. And we were seeing all this stuff. And um, it was just based, the message was to merge with the oneness of all things and trust where we are being led. That was the message for all of us in the group. So then to get Marak as the, the group consciousness card, and it was embrace oneness with the universe, number 16, which is the date. It was so very magical. <laughs> so magical. Yeah. Every time something like that happens, um, which isn't like every single day, but every time it does, I'm still like a little shocked. And I, <laughs> it, it, I have to remind myself every I time, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like we sh- we should just be going, "Hey, this is old hat now. Why are we why are we surprised? This just happens all the time." <laughs> but it just, I think it just keeps getting better and better. And yeah. even one of the the girls I was with last night, the witch who's not a witch. When it was her home and she, we were her guests as we were doing all this, um, you know, she said that there's a quickening, there's an awakening, it's a universal awakening. I mean, this girl is a, is a really um, amazing businesswoman. She has a, a beauty hair salon here that really unites her when she has goddess gatherings through her her beautiful salon. You know, it's like she, through the, the uh, I guess, the art of, of um, preening and pampering, yeah. uh, she brings together people on a collective spiritual level as well. It's really, really quite profound. So, but she was saying there's a quickening and awakening. And the way she interprets the world is kind of like um, a kind of astral universal kind of, uh, uh, you know, she's got her own words to describe what, what I'm experiencing as a witch. You know, she's just got different terms to describe the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting because like you said, like, they're not witches, but they can pick up this energy and they can tell that, you know, things are happening and they can feel all the same oh, things yeah. as the rest of us. That's I, the fact. I that sometimes wonder so is, the world, is the world catching up to witches? I yeah. mean, dare, dare I put it ahead and say, is the world catching up to us? Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> Maybe that um, is. But that doesn't, it doesn't have to be, that doesn't have to be a hierarchical statement or anything. It's just, I, I just think the world is catching up to what, how witches live, what we, how we see the world. Yeah, you know and how we experience it, you know. So how I wanted we to create it. Yeah, it's. I, I think it's a really kind of scary but exciting time to be a witch. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about your oracle deck of the the magic mm. of you. The artwork of this deck is beautiful. Is beautiful. Um, and it's so. It's very profound, the the messages that I just, I mean, these just few words on the cards um, and the actual image there, like the witch card. I just, I just sat here and I mm. stared at it for quite some time. What led you to create an Oracle deck? Well, I was just really lucky that Rockpool Publishing, who came into my life a few years ago and said, oh, would you like to do an autobiography, a how-to <laughs> book and an Oracle deck? And I was like, I didn't have a job at the time flying airplanes. <laughs> I was doing all the aid work and training and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> okay, yes, sure. I didn't expect to have an opportunity to do something like this again. So when I got time to doing the Oracle deck, I was a little bit like, oh gosh, what do I do? You know, <laughs> how do, where do I get this started? But I was very lucky that the Andreas, who's a guy that works at Rockpool, and he kind of works in the sales and marketing arm of it, but he had his head out. He's, um, he'd been looking at different artists, and he said, look, I've found a few. Um, here's some suggested art. Um, check out these portfolios I've found online. So the first I saw was Marcella Bolivar, who's, you know, who's done the art for Magic of You. As soon as I saw her work, I was like, oh, my God, this is it. This is, I get it now. And then I started to feel that I was channeling cards. All of a sudden, it was like, get out of, get out of the way, Fiona. 
this has to come through. <laughs> and so she allowed me to choose 36 images. She gave me access to all her digital files. I chose 36 images and then I just pretty much channeled it. I mean, I, I created it, but, but when I, I mean, the names and, and the, 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 the themes of the cards were, uh, a lot of the time it was just coming through me, not from me, which is how I read tarot. You know, because I was thinking I've read tarot for three, more than three decades now, and I use the same deck and I just, you know, the cards are so rubbed and worn, they've been shuffled and read thousands of times, and I'm on my second deck, you know, and it's <laughs> like that. So it's like, you know, the first one is in, in um, storage because it just all the wax came off completely and just started to disintegrate. So, you know, I... I um. I just thought, how do how, how do I understand the purpose of the oracle? And then it just came through really clearly that it was about unlocking hidden truths and that this was an oracle for the reader. This is the one the reader can trust. This is the guidance that will come through for the reader to be able to be shown something rather than just see what they kind of want to see. And um, the, the oracle deck can be used in conjunction with tarot spreads and even other oracle decks, a card can be pulled from the Magic of You Oracle to, for clarity and confirmation. Um, but essentially, it's a deck for the reader to read for themselves. And that's where I've been getting really beautiful feedback from people that the cards invite contemplation and the, the individual reader is, it, it, as witches, you know, we're called to heal and serve. That's what I write in Art of Witch too. How are you mm-hmm. called to heal and serve? Because in addition to interacting with nature regularly, tact- tactile, physical, actual interaction with the natural world, I also say, in the book that, you know, a witch is called to heal and serve, and that is the mark of a true witch as well. How are you healing? How are you serving? Um, because that is what a witch is born to do as well. So in that sense, as we are healers and we are here to serve, we're that others as well as ourselves. So the deck is designed to help the witch help herself, and then she can be more useful in the world in helping others. Yeah, that's beautiful. It, it That's exactly... Um... <laughs> I feel like that's exactly what so many people need. And I feel like that's the way a lot of people use Oracle decks already. And sometimes it just doesn't Mm. connect. But, man, the artwork on that. (laughs) As soon as I saw it. It's deep, eh? It's deep and it's dark. It's dark, too. Like, I just, um, I loved her. I loved her um, vision. She's Her Instagram name is Tropical Gloom. And I just said, oh, let's just sum it up here. I am living in the islands. (laughs) It's like, you know, always looking into the dark. You know, like I'll go, I'll go and walk around in the dark at night and just, just feel the island, you know, the island energy. And so when her Instagram name was Tropical Gloom, I thought, oh, we're going to get along. She's a, I've never met her in person, but she's, um, she and I've communicated via email and text and she's a, she's a very compelling young, young woman. And I'm very blessed to have been able to do this with her. And, um, so I think where, the cards have a, a kind of not only a visually kind of dark, arresting, moody kind of energy to them. It's also in the lessons as well. It's about um, going within. But there's also cards there that are, are like, you know, it's your time to lead, you know, step out, yeah. step out of the shadows, you know. Yeah, a lot of the so ones I of it, saw. Most were... of it's really dark. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the ones I saw, they, they did have some darkness to them, but there's always this element of light or of this darkness being... Well, in the darkest night, the, I mean, the brightest star shines in the darkest night. Yeah. So, you know, we've got, sometimes we've got to willingly enter the darkness. And I think that's that's the gift and that's another essential thing of the witch too, that the, the biggest reveals are when a witch is alone and in yeah. communion with the divine through herself. That's when the biggest reveals come. That's what I've learned. And so I offer that in the art of witch as well. It's like uh, you're not going to get those big breakthroughs by attending a group meeting. You're going to get them in solitude. And yes. then it's your duty to share them. Yeah, often some of the the most clarifying um, feelings and thoughts come straight out of the darkness. Uh, yeah, so exactly. I, I, the cauldron, exactly. Yeah. So I, 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 I just thought the, um, I just thought the cards really, really did a good job of not shying away from that darkness and instead incorporating it and making it something to be proud of or to explore or to mm. embrace. Not a to be more. scared of. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the key in the darkness is. Because the key is a big theme. The back of the card deck is actually was designed to have a key, which Jess from Rockpool ended up doing that key, and I loved it. She's a really lovely art girl that works at, at Rockpool Publishing as well. So Marcella actually didn't design the key on the back of the cards. Jess did that, and I, I want to give Jess a shout-out because she's just such a – she's a witch who's not a witch as well, you know. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, she uh, – what 
the, the, the collaborative element of, of, you know, making these cards and, and them being a meaningful tool of transformation in people's lives is definitely something I did, Marcella did with the art, and also rock, the Rock Pool team did. They're really, that was one of the other lovely things about going to Australia was actually meeting my publishers and my editor yeah. in person, hanging out with them. Like, they're like family. They're just such cool people, you know, with big hearts and a real passion for what they do. So I feel very, very blessed to be part of it. And I think, you know, the the cards and, and the new book and even my autobiography, you know, that's The Naked Witch, it, it's all being in this, this family, this rock pool publishing family, everything's been allowed to shine its light. And um, I think in the past when I was published by the bigger publishers like HarperCollins, Simon Schuster, I always felt like I had to write the book that they thought would sell. And there was yeah. always pressure on me to kind of, tweak it a certain way to go after that pop culture kind of attention and audience and rock pool never tell me to do that they just let, let me write as weird and as dark as i want and conversely shine that light shines even brighter because of it you know yeah that's that's fantastic that's exactly so i feel very yeah very grateful and very grounded in, exactly in an authentic relationship with my books and my cards right now like it like i never have before really i mean except for the very first book i think because that was 20 years ago that first one I wrote was just so it was so raw and and authentic it was the first thing and but every book after that became to a degree not it yeah it, it kind of became a degree of okay I have to do this for a job now yeah you know and then coming to Rockpool and doing these three the the Naked Witch Autobiography the Art of Witch Manifesto and the, and the Magic View Oracle that's it's it's been stripped back to that raw authentic voice again because this is not my job anymore I fly airplanes that's my yeah. job I do this because for the for the privilege and the and the, the humble joy that it is to, to communicate and share what I've learned over the years and, and for it to be received and discussed in, in, in an open and, and joyous way. I just, you know, yeah. feel We're, very, very blessed. I often, um, I've been hearing a lot of people who are currently writing about witchcraft or involved in more modern witchcraft say that some of the work that they've done is some of the most spiritual work that they've done you know mm. it gives a whole new meaning mm. to the things that you get paid for like writing a book that you're really yeah. passionate about or making the deck it's it's an entirely different um it's an entirely different way to look at value almost oh absolutely and it's funny i was asked in some of the interviews uh, one of them the a lady asked me um what what's been your most successful moment in your magical career to date <laughs> and i said the day it stopped the day it stopped being my career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it's true though, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it can be hard. It can be hard to be kind of spiritual in the spotlight <laughs> sometimes. That's, that's a really great way of putting it. It is hard to be spirit, hard sometimes to be spiritual in the spotlight. But I think what I what I experienced in Australia, like the, the, especially the, the spoken word events, it really was a – it was just like one giant coven. Every event was just, we were all kind of in it together, you know, and yeah. and had our essential roles and, and the energy. Like we all did ritual work at the end of each of each event and just the energy in the room was just bloody, That's it was mind-blowing. Beautiful, yeah, really beautiful. We did rituals of gratitude because I was, it's another thing in Art of Which I talk about I, and actually it's in, um, with Magic of You as well, each card has a ritual that to go, that goes along with it. So there's a book that comes with the cards, and that has the full meaning of each card. And then there's a little book booklet. Uh, well, the little booklet has the meaning of each card and the ritual for each mm-hmm. card, the suggested ritual for you to perform to anchor the guidance. So one other thing I suggest in the art of witch is at a point in a witch's life, she no longer does spells; she just does rituals. Yeah. Um, because she's she's stepped out of it's that whole dismantling of ego, no longer needing to micromanage the world and understanding that your spell is a finite view of what's possible. And it's actually mm-hmm. better to do a ritual of gratitude for what you have and become a magnet for more of that um, rather than to try and conjure or manifest something. And um, But I do think there's, there's, I think through, I go so far as to link certain activities and behavior in a witch's life to do with the linear passage of time. So I'm saying, sure, in your teens, in your 20s, do spells, you know, oh, work yeah. it out, blow, you know, explode that ego, get crazy with it. But by the time you reach your sort of thirties to mid thirties in linear years, it's, and and I kind of correlate this with with you know kind of the dominant biological breeding cycle as well, even though that's changing so much. But just in a sense of the shift of of you know the role we have, and then how that 
that ego in being dismantled that says the spell casting is no longer necessary. Healing, healing, doing doing healing rituals, doing rituals of gratitude, um, rituals of. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I talk a little bit about binding, but again, that's start, that's moving into spell casting land, you know. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, I'm kind of, I think that the evolved witch at a point in her linear years will 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 no longer cast spells. Yeah. But I, I do I say in the book, how to make your spells work 100 percent of the time is by important. making the 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 purpose of them to be of service. So rather than yeah. casting a spell to, you know, oh, I need a new job. You cast the spell going, okay, how will I function more efficiently and usefully in the world with a new job? And you cast mm-hmm. your spell with that with that goal rather than just the job aspect. And that way the universe conspires in your favor every time. If you can in your in your spell casting determine how will it make how will it benefit others, yeah. not yourself. Which is completely the opposite of what, why a lot of people cast spells. You it know. Is. But when and that's where it's a little bit controversial in the book. But I really believe and have experienced uh, in my personal life and in witnessed around me that this is where we're evolving to. It's a, it's not a me, 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 me craft anymore. It's an us, 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 us. Yeah. That's actually, oh man, that's so interesting that you say that because this is just something that I've been thinking about a lot is how, how spells kind of change as you get older and spells to me seem like a, a one-off thing. You know, I'm going to cast a spell for a new job. Whereas mm. the the ritual that I engage in for my own is mm. more like, okay, I am going to get better at working. I'm going to increase my motivation or my inspiration. I'm going to mm. work on all of the reasons maybe my job isn't what I want or maybe I'm not having enough money rather than just attracting mm. money. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, yeah, exactly. Well, see, that's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. That's where we're evolving to. And so that means it kind of – you know, all the recipe approach spell books, which I've written as well. But in a way, I mean, ideally they'd all just kind of be shelved or, you know, recycled into something else because it's ritual work is where, where we're going now. And that's more trans- transformative yeah. and more expansive. And, um, it's, it's exciting. I think because it, I, I think a, the other thing with spells, and again, I put this in Art of Witch too, <laughs> but, um, we think of spells as a quick fix and you know and I used to be someone would say oh have you got a spell for love and I'd be like sure grab a red candle <laughs> carve your initials into it trace over you to lick your thumb and trace over the carving with your spit and light the candle at the full moon and boom you're gonna have a boyfriend the week after I mean or whatever I mean I was saying that too but these days I'm um, when people say have you got a quick fix or a quick spell I'm like aren't you worth more than a quick fix oh you know aren't, and that's it's true. We're worth more than it. Yeah. So putting that in the book was like, I don't know, but everything, everything that I thought people would be like up in arms about, no, everyone's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so it helps me know because I, I know without of which a lot of the time I wrote that out sitting out here on this little rock in the Caribbean in between flights and at night after flying all day. And I, um, a lot of that was you know, just kind of being out here and physically removed from the majority of the world <laughs> out in the middle of this massive ocean, I think it, it gave me um, a perspective and a, and a view, uh, which so I feel very grateful that if what I've written is resonating and not only are people um, having their, you know, learning from it, but also saying, yes, I agree, I get it. So they're being validated, then um, then it's all, it, it feels like uh you know, I, I guess my point is I I didn't do these books for, to be, as we were saying earlier, Paige, for a job. Yeah. I felt that, you know, the God universe, my idea of a higher power, goddess universe, you know, put these things in front of me and I, I the only thing I had to do was do them. Yeah. You know, because it was coming through me, not from me. Yeah. You just, you just had to follow that feeling. Yeah, I had to get out of time. my own way and just let this stuff happen. Yeah. You know, and it, and it just, and it did. It's extraordinary to, to look at them and just go, wow, it happened again. It's like giving birth a bit. Cause I don't have children. I don't, I don't have, like, I didn't have, bio- I, I wouldn't, wouldn't have biological children now. I think that ship might have sailed, but it's, um, <laughs> but I have had a lot of babies, a lot of books, a lot of songs, a lot yeah. of now an oracle deck. A lot of creation. You know, like, yeah. It's like, it's like, um, giving birth. It really is every time. 
Yeah. I, I wasn't shocked when I saw that the title of your book was Art of Witch because I thought, you know, if there's <laughs> if there's anyone that could really blend art and witch, it's it's her. She's been doing this for so long. <laughs> your witch your witchcraft, your spirituality has always been very much entwined with your art. And uh even more so now, like the tour and the book and the oracle, it's it's obvious that that is still that is still so important. Well, even, yeah. And also, you know, even singing the songs that I wrote in De- Deaf Effects 20, 20 years ago, 23, 24, 25 years ago, and I'm singing them on stage now and it's like spiral dance, you know, like, you know, in the, in the room at the back of the house, the walls are soft and pulsing, wet and cool, magic wells up inside of me until it overflows, cascading down my cheeks. It's, and the wise witch wove her dreams, spinning cold ropes of silver that wound around the trees starry item spinning slowly a spiral dance i mean that song i wrote about a dream i had in 1990 and i realized then i i really am i'm a witch and this <laughs> dream i had because when you dream about a house and it has different rooms it's asset aspects of your personality if you do dreaming divination interpretation that's what it is so each room had a different theme but the room at the back of the house the walls were soft and pulsing well they were made of living living trees and they were pulsing and sap was seeping out of them and I and then I started to I stood in the center of this room and this is in my dream it is so tangible and one foot lifted up off the floor and I started spinning slowly so I I sort of say in the song starry eyed I'm spinning slowly a spiral dance but this magic room at the back of the house where the walls were living trees pulsing and I one foot lifts and I start spinning I remember in the dream my head flung back my eyes opened and liquid crystal just poured out of my eyes. Wow. And that was all the magic welling up inside of me until it overflows, cascading down my cheeks. So, you know, I was singing that song on tour with Death Sex just now, like, like a few weeks ago, and just realizing, you know, that, as you said, like the, the, the art, the creation is always reflected in my magical spiritual life, even though I didn't come out of the broom closet until after Death Sex. Yeah. It was always in there. Yeah, you know, they were and also my political tried. leanings as well. Like I sang "Kill the Real Girls," and it's it's a, a pro-choice song, and I was like, "Yeah, I if I wrote this song yesterday, I still mean every word. I wrote it twenty years ago." <laughs> and then "Masses Like Asses," which is about you know consumerism and, and capitalism, and it was like or corporatism, actually not capitalism now, yeah. corporatism. I mean, I said, "Yeah, if I wrote this yesterday, I stand by every word." But I wrote it twenty three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible to get to sing songs you wrote a long time ago and still, you know, still resonate. You know, yeah, it's it, pretty fun. It's a little sad that some. <laughs> it's a little sad that well, corporatism I mean, is kind of sad. Like, oh god, this is still really topical, yeah. but oh well. But people still really the process. need to hear. They they need to hear that support about those issues. You know, it's still so important. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's beautiful. Um, <laughs> We've been talking for an hour. Are you, you going to play this on your podcast, the whole thing? Yeah, I'll have to go all soon, of it. But... Yeah, I was just going to say, I think that was everything that I had on my list here. And I just wanted to know mm-hmm. if there's anything else um, that you have upcoming or that you want people to be on the lookout for. I mean, I, I think I just really like to, um, you know, touch base on FionaHorn.com is my website. And People were asking me, um, cause I make that, I do my website. So I've done a big update on it with thanking everyone who came to the, um, to the events in Australia. And there's information about the new books, the cards, where they're available. And even you can buy them online by clicking on the links and it takes you there. But also people were asking me about my solo album, Witch Web, and my magical life CD for, uh, of spells and meditations for positive change. People were saying, how can we get them? By going to my website and if you go to the section on music, they're there and you can order them online. People were asking me, so I just would like to, as a part yeah. of my chat with you, Paige, just say if you're curious about anything, um, go to FionaHorn.com. All of my social links are there too, like Instagram, Facebook, everything. It's just, this, and I do it myself, so it's all always updated, super current. Yeah. Another thing I do when I get home from flying an airplane all day, I write books and do my website <laughs> and my social media. <laughs> I relate. Yeah, I'll make sure I'll uh, I'll make sure to put a um, put a link right in the description. So a link, yeah, it. that'd be great. Thank you. Excellent, because that that sounds fantastic, and so many people are listening to more spiritual stuff now. So that would be I'm yeah. Sure podcasts be. are um, huge in Australia; like they're bigger than regular radio. Oh, that's podcasts cool. are, are full on. Yeah, no, it's great. I love that the voice is, is in the hands of the people. You mm-hmm. know. 
it's like exciting. pirate radio a lot. <laughs> mm, it is. It is. It's just like pirate radio. So it's pirate podcast now. Yeah, it's Fantastic. pirate podcasting, and I, I think it's really. Um, yeah, I think it's neat. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so much for making. Well, time. thank you, Paige. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Oh, it was it was honestly my pleasure, and I am. Oh, that was so great. Thank you so much to Fiona Horn for agreeing to be on the show today. It's like I said, it's always such a pleasure to have her on the show. She's such a an interesting and engaging speaker and person, really. <laughs> so it was really uh, a treat to have her on. So today's episode came out today, July 22nd, this Monday, because Fiona Horn's The Magic of You Oracle is out today. So make sure you guys check that out. Now, my next episode episode 49, remember this is episode 50, the next one will be episode 49, is an interview with Joanna DeVoe and people have been asking me to do this for years. I was a guest on Joanna DeVoe's show back in 2017. So I'm really excited to finally have her on and we are going to be talking about embracing your inner queen. So not only do you have this wonderful Monday episode with Fiona, but you are also getting another wonderful episode next week with Joanna DeVoe. So please be sure to tune in and watch for that on Monday afternoon. If you want to find out more about me or anything Fiona and I talked about today, you can find that at thefatfeministwitch.com. I will be putting links to her website and to all of her products and projects (laughs) so that you guys can find out a little bit more about some of the things she talked about. You can also find me across social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. I'm not so great at getting back to messages, mostly because a lot of messages get filtered. If you ever need to contact me, you can also email me at fatfeministwitch at gmail.com. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and a very smooth Mercury retrograde. Bye, everybody.